Nicolas Cage possessed animatronics. And Nicolas Cage, a sacrificial town. And Nicolas Cage, the song, Heads, Shoulders, Knees and Toes. Knees and Toes, followed by violence. And Nicolas Cage. So come get locked in overnight with us and the animatronics at Willy's Wonderland. Shout out to my good friend Christian Blatt for his YouTube show as our sponsor today called The Blattcast. That's B-L-A-D-T-C-A-S-T, which can be found on YouTube and wherever you listen to your streaming podcast shows. His show focuses on pop culture with an emphasis on movies, television, and music. Some of his past guests have been Steve Carell, Seth MacFarlane, Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, Dennis Miller, and Dave Perner of Soul Asylum, and so many more. Definitely check that show out, guys. Okay, so Dan, I can't give Willy's Wonderland a five out of five. I'm sorry, everybody. It was a really great movie, though. I have to say, I really enjoyed it. I thought there were many reasons why it was an incredible movie, including the music. Whoa. Like, I literally sat in my car after watching the movie, and put the soundtrack on, you sent it to me. I could not stop dancing in my car. I had an amazing time with that. Loved, uh oh. <laughs> You're upset that I'm not giving it a five out of five. Yeah, I'd like to know why. <laughs> this movie was so great. I just thought that there were a few misses. I thought Nick Cage was incredible. Now, it reminded me too of why I love Nick Cage so much because my favorite movie of his was The Family Man back in 2000. Talk about like a throwback. And then you can see how in, what's the word? The bird. No. <laughs> No, the bird is like the he, bird. how something he is as an actor. Versatile. Versatile. Thank you. I lose words when I host. It's wild. Okay. So you can see how versatile he is as an actor when he can take such a serious role like Family Man and then play this role as the lead of this movie with no dialogue. Like to be able to use your physicality to tell a story, that really did draw me in. But there were some things about it that weren't so incredible to me and i'm i'm sorry i feel your energy right now dan how please i feel the heat so some of the acting i thought was subpar with some of the the kids that were in the film i also i'm sorry i thought some of the actors too the kids were brought in just to be killed like that was the whole point of them and i get it it's like that 80s trope idea right which came in and the movie is supposed to be outlandish so if you come into it thinking okay this is going to be an outlandish movie it is really really fun but I just, I don't know, after, so this movie was compared to Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, this episode will be hosted by Amanda by herself. I am leaving. So I love this movie. Um, when I was younger, I used to think about Chuck E. Cheese all the time and what would happen if you actually got locked inside a Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> with these creepy animatronics? Just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, are you going to be scared of them? Is there nothing to be scared of? Are they going to come alive at night and hunt you down? So that was always an idea like brewing in my head. And then eventually years later, they came out with the video game Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes, I know, there's a lot of fans out there, but it's good. Willy's Wonderland to me topped that 100%. And the fact mm -hmm. that Nick Cage doesn't say a word and uses his facial yeah. expressions and body expressions and that whole character he created out of nothing, basically, mm -hmm. he was such a badass in there. Like, I, I don't know, I just, the, the, the animatronics themselves, like, you know, the possession story and, and just the, the characters in general, like, just drew me in. That, that's my take. I just, okay. I, I give it a five out of five, absolutely. So I'm, I'm close. So I'm right there. I'm like a 4.9. So I'm definitely up there. I just thought there were a few things that were missed. And I'll tell you, in the beginning, it took me a little bit of time to get into the movie. So it took me, I think I needed that backstory about the animatronics and what happened to them a little bit earlier. If that came in earlier, then 5.8 out of 5, you know? I think I just needed a little, because I'm somebody who loves characters and I love to really get sucked into the plot. But you got hints because you saw the posters on the wall and they were playing the video on the TV where you see the characters. So they kind of hinted at the characters a bit. Oh, so maybe it's just me. I think so. <laughs> maybe, which is totally fine, right? Sometimes you ever like watch a movie and maybe you're just not as turned on as you should be. Like sometimes I need my husband to explain things to me. 
So like, I don't know. <laughs> there, the other misses were like that. I didn't know why Nick Cage wasn't interacting with the kids. And also what was the point of the soda? That's his mysterious character that, that was created for him. What's funny is I'll take it back to the writer of this film was actually originally going to be in the film as the lead. Right. And he just said, you know what? I'm gonna be fighting somebody in an animatronic suit. We don't need words. I'm not that big of an actor yet. Mm -hmm. So when they actually turned it around and got Nick Cage involved, Nick Cage loved the script. You know, the, the writer said, look, I'll put in all these lines for you. And Nick was like, no, leave it. He's like, this script is perfect the way it is. He's like, I love it. So I thought like all his expressions, bodily expressions and facial expressions, and just, you could tell when he arrives that he's been there before, not at that location, but he knows this evil. It's almost like he's expecting it. Mm -hmm. You know, like he knows what's inside. Just like even when he goes inside, you can tell he's not phased when these things start coming alive at him. So it's like, who is this guy? What has he dealt with in the past that he's so calm about this? And he's so mechanical when the guy tells him to make sure you're taking breaks, sets his watch and like every 15 minutes, no matter what he is doing, he goes to take that break. So I think that was more of why he wasn't interacting with the kids was just the mysteriousness of his character and why he's actually there. Like it was, so if you come into the film, watching the film, expecting it to be unapologetically ridiculous, you're completely sucked in. It's so much fun because you see all of the nods to past horror and what's happened in other, like the 80s tropes that I mentioned, right? Like the never, never have sex. Don't go into, don't go into the fun room. Right. You know, like don't do those things. And say, these characters, stay here, I'll be back. Right, I'll be right back, come on. <laughs> never say that. Right. And then you're like, oh, as the viewer, right? You're like, <laughs> but, but for me, that was really fun because I love horror right. and I loved, I love the 80s movies. There's nothing better. And just that, that reminds me of the, the couple when they see the fun room and they're kind of like, Hey. And they separate from the group, you know it's their end. You know, I read too that Geo Parsons put the script up on Bloodlist. People get together, put up screenplays of horror films. Mm -hmm. And the screenplay wound up doing phenomenal on Bloodlist. Okay. So like you're saying, Nick Cage ended up falling in love with the script and well, this and wanted to be involved in it. Do you know that it was actually made during the pandemic? Yeah. So yeah. Kevin Kevin Lewis, the director, almost died oh. after the film. He ended up on a ventilator. He ended up with COVID on a ventilator. So they were saying that this film, they felt like it was really meant to be made because two weeks after production finished, the whole world shut down. Yeah. So I actually believe that this is an adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's. But when I did my research, I found that it was actually not. They claim, so both Geo Parsons and Kevin Lewis claim it is not an adaptation. Though, if you look at the story of Five Nights at Freddy, you can't say, were they living underneath a rock that they didn't, they, they were never exposed to the story of Five Nights at Freddy? No, that doesn't mean that it's an actual, like, take off of Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that's there's been plenty statement. of places, like, there was, uh, before Chuck E. Cheese, there was something else. Very similar. I think it was, like, Pizza Planet or... I mean, that creepy idea has existed, I'm sure, with many of people, mm -hmm. you know, long before that video game was created. Plus, the writer, O.G. Parsons, like I said, wanted to create this movie of him. Just, just go back. It's G.O. Parsons, not O.G. <laughs> He's the O.G. <laughs> Because the OG G.O. Parsons, mm -hmm. no. The, the writer, OG Parsons, said he wanted to, I said. <laughs> it's G.O. Well, you can't be in two places at once. <laughs> you ever see the Santa Claus and the old guy, you couldn't get the damn line? Never mind. Okay, so you got Geo Parsons, right? He even said he wanted to create this movie that was him fighting this animatronic. And right. then the story grew from there. Mm -hmm. And this happened long before Five Nights at Freddy's. So mm -hmm. oh. I'm, I'm sticking with okay. this is an original concept. Okay, because there was also... As far as Five Nights as Freddy goes, I'm not saying it's 100% original. Okay, that is fair. But then when I was watching a review oh, quite some time ago about this movie, and they spoke about the Banana Splits, which was another movie that, that, that they say was animatronics that came to life. But that movie, don't waste your time, guys. It was not good. See, no. You like the Banana Splits. Okay, but for a different reason. Like, yes, the, the movie in general was terrible. But I remember the banana splits when I was really young and, and watching it on okay. TV and, and seeing like Bozo the Clown in between. And so I was so excited when they were making the banana splits movie until I saw they turned it into horror. Yeah. And it just, mm -hmm. it didn't work to have that kids show 
that was so wholesome that you watched as a child yeah. and now turning it into a horror movie and, and pretty badly, I might add. Yes, it's like Hanna-Barbera was the creator of the banana splits. Right, <laughs> so right. Can you make them evil? It's so sad. And, you know, and this seems to have started some kind of trend as well with all these children's shows being turned into horror. I mean, you look now with all the rights that are going away to certain characters. You have Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Uh, we got Peter Pan coming. There's a Snow White. You got uh, Bambi, I believe that's the next one on the bill. And then eventually they're gonna put all the characters together in one movie and call it the Poonaverse. No. Yeah. I can't, how are you gonna make Bambi? Oh. This is what we've come to, Hollywood? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I appreciate it, but come on! <laughs> oh no. Okay, so pop quiz question for you, Amanda. Uh-oh. Was this movie in theaters first? Video on demand or direct to DVD? Uh, I know it wasn't in theaters because it was the pandemic. Uh oh. <laughs> Maybe it was in theaters. So in February of 2021, it actually got a limited theater run. Oh. So it womp was, womp. It was, in fact, in theaters. But Shortly before that, it was released first on Video On Demand, where you can just rent it from pretty much any streaming company out there. In 2021, um, it physically got released on everything, pretty much. From the We got variant VHS covers, like nice. special editions. There's this company out there called Witter Entertainment, and what they do is they'll take newer movies and they will put them out as special edition VHSs. It's really cool for collectors. The VHS, that's like a clamshell case. That takes me back to the 80s right, right? there. Right, and you got a Disney-ish style clamshell case. Some of these come with uh, like stickers and little Whoa, cards. I love and, that. Right, how cool is that? That's cool. They even did a Kickstarter comic series. And there's about like maybe five of them. I might be mistaken. They all came with trading cards. And one of my favorites, the Orange Variant vinyl soundtrack. Can I ask you a stupid question? Sure. What does Orange Variant mean? Variant is different variations of the way something is released. So a lot of records from bands and stuff will release, you know, a new album and they'll have blue vinyl, red vinyl, they'll have yeah. orange, you know, orange and black swirl vinyl. So they come out with all these variants for collectors. Basically, it's a, you know, ripping off the fans <laughs> in a way <laughs> when you think about it. But a lot of us are suckers and we buy it anyway. So, Dan, I'm going to pop a kernel back at you for your part of the quiz. Bring it so on. I'm, I'm personally a big fan of the editing. I thought it was really, really strong. Do you know who the editor was and how do you feel about the editing? I do not remember the editor's name. So the editor is Ryan Liebert. Okay. Did you enjoy the editing? I think the whole thing worked with editing, but I mean, I really loved the whole head, shoulder, knees and toes scene mm -hmm. with him fighting the, uh, the chameleon and Sarah Siren. That was a lot of fun. I thought that moved very quickly, all the, the fighting and the, and the blood splatter, that, mm -hmm. that all worked great. Mm -hmm. My favorite edited scene was him in the bathroom where he's fighting the gorilla with a plunger and then he goes back and starts cleaning. Come on, seriously, like that's what made it so much fun and so much more outlandish, which was Kevin Lewis's point in the first place. Like you're killing a gorilla with a plunger and then you just go back to cleaning the bathroom. Like okay. nothing happened. There was actually, um an interview done that said that that was kind of a nod to Breaking Bad. I almost say it's a nod to, for me anyway, I saw a, a huge resemblance to American History X. Oh, wow, the way yes. he gets the gorilla, he curb mouths him on the toilet bowl, and then... Yeah, so messed up, but so good. Right, right? <laughs> it was badass. Yeah. Do you know how much the budget was on this one? Yeah, wasn't it around five million? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. That was a high budget. It is and it's not for movies these days. Yeah, especially with the animatronics. Right. But I think you probably know this. Most of the animatronics are actually people in costumes and there was only one costume made. So they had to get it and get it done. Ozzy was actually the only one that was a puppet. Right, and you see the, uh, and there's a guy in a green screen suit controlling the, the neck of the ostrich. Can you see it? No, okay, not. I was no, like, where was that, I? That, that brings me to that. That, that wasn't a goof, was it? 
That brings me to your editing. You love the editing so yeah. much you couldn't even tell that. Wow, that's incredible. In fact, one one of the, in fact, I'll bring it back to your editing. You want to talk about great editing. The the shot because it's a puppeteer holding the ostrich's neck to make it move up and down mm -hmm. side to side. The first initial like contact that Nick Cage and the ostrich have together, you just see this creepy freeze frame of the ostrich's neck just stiff up, but it's so creepy and so demon like the way it just freezes like uh, that was so like that gave me chills watching that part do you ha so being that we're talking a little bit about the budget has the movie made the money back do you know because i think in the original release it only made about four hundred thousand. Four hundred and fifty thousand, mm -hmm. i believe i don't know after market you know what sales and merchandising and whatnot what it's done but they are talking a sequel so it had to you know you must be excited i am i'm <laughs> hoping they go through with it so i actually read that potentially if there is a sequel it might either be in a circus or an amusement park that would kick ass yeah so that kind of makes me think of killer clowns it does which we'll talk about soon enough. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us as we explored Willy's Wonderland. We hope that you join us next week when we learn all about killer clowns from outer space. We'll see you next time.